Good afternoon. Today is Monday, the 6th day of June 2011. Let's take a look at this market here. We did have some further downside, obviously, and we're looking at a chart right now that's uh, part of my Realtek screen. Each Monday, Realtek sponsors this segment, so you have to listen to me tell you why. Uh, if you're a serious trader, I think you should be using Realtek for your analysis uh, to look at the charts the way I do here. Uh, you know, the way that I actually show it, you don't see, is I've got all these tabs up here with the different time frames, and I can simply just just uh, switch those tabs to get a quick look at any different time frame. But what we're going to start out with here is this daily chart, which shows four different moving averages. It shows the 50-day moving average, which we tested and uh, bounced from, then the 100-day moving average, which was tested a couple times, and we bounced from there. And now we're down at that rising 150-day moving average. This is the level that I was talking about here for the last week or so, that it looked like the next potential level once we took out the uh, April lows. And and we did take out the April lows today, so that was good to see. There were a couple levels that uh, I had mentioned on Twitter that we should uh, keep an eye on today. That that was first the uh, April lows, and then we had uh, daily S2, which was also taken out at $29.33, and then finally the 150-day uh, moving average, which right now uh, is down at uh, the price of, let's just take a look at that together. We'll go in here and change this to a snapshot view. Uh, the 150-day moving Moving average is 128.90. So we came down to a low today of uh, that's not right. We're not looking at the right data. That's why 128.78 was the low today and 128.97. So we did it was a 158 moving average. So we undercut that intraday and uh, you know the close wasn't very strong at all though. Uh, it looked like maybe we're going to try to get a bounce, but there's really no evidence here that that 150-day moving average is going to be a source of uh, demand where the demand is found and sellers say hey let's uh, lay off the uh, gas here a little bit it's a potential level and and the reason I've been looking at it is because again this market has been really experiencing some very controlled pullbacks that are met with buyers at these key moving averages and once uh, one moving average fails then it's on to kind of the next one so that's where we are now and I think it makes sense to be looking for uh, an area where the market could bounce from. But when we look at any time frame, there's just no evidence that the buyers uh, have come in and, and uh, started to, to take any control at all. So if we get a, a move higher from here, maybe it's going to be similar to, uh, what, you know, maybe we get a gap lower tomorrow morning. That would be welcome, I think, that uh, if the market was to gap lower and then uh, kind of... Uh, you know, trade a little bit higher for a little while, break back below through that VWAP and then back up again. It could turn this market around. So um, it's it's really a market that most people should be sidelined or, you know, you should be looking at this if you've had short exposure that this is the place uh, to probably begin to cover some of that. But I want to also, you know, warn you that the moving averages, just because the SPY has held these moving averages pretty good in the past and we're down a lot. I mean, that's part of it is well we're down you know six points here basically or a little less than five percent over the last few days and that generally leads to some kind of viable bounce but uh, you can't just do it blindly and um, when we take a look at the retail holders for instance the retail index traded out to an all-time high uh, just earlier this year and we've been talking about that how it broke out and then pulled back in if we take a look at that weekly time frame this level a couple weeks ago did look like it was holding as uh, this prior resistance was holding a support above a rising 50-day moving average in this little band of support but last week we broke it and it continues to sell off uh, without any sign of a bounce at all so this market in the last a uh, week and a half has undercut the uh, the 10, 20, 50, uh, the 100 day, the 150 day moving average, and now it looks like the next level this thing could maybe bounce is down near the 200 day moving average. So the retailers have really sold off very strong here, and it shows that you can't just stick bids in at a 50 day or a 100 or 150 day moving average. That's not a good strategy. If you're going to look to buy these types of things. I think a very good way to do it, or the best way to do it, is uh, probably, well, there's probably better ways, but a, a way that I like to look at it is uh, with weekly options. The, uh, the 
so there's options for instance on the spy that expire this coming Friday um, there's options on uh, I bought some in General Motors today General Motors looks like it, it just looks like hell I mean the stock is in uh, at, at all-time lows but a lot of times these uh, breaks to lows have led to some tradable bounces in here if the market bounces then GM could go uh, the General Motors calls that expire on Friday the 29 strike is what I ended up buying um, they'll, they'll go to zero if uh, if if it if it doesn't bounce, but if it does, I think you'd see this uh, stock north of 30 bucks a share. So it's a low risk way to get some uh, long exposure after having uh, some good shorts throughout the day. Um, obviously, it didn't close very good, but uh, you know that's that's the risk you take when you're trying to look for a bounce. At least do it with a strategy that's going to be able to strictly limit what your losses are. If if you're wrong, and so far, uh, again, there's no evidence whatsoever that the buyers are coming in and taking control of any of these markets so uh, stand aside if you're not an, an aggressive trader and uh, otherwise I, I think it, it makes sense to kind of be anticipating uh, a bounce somewhere in here maybe tomorrow ideally again a, a, a gap lower would be uh, uh, welcome in my book the uh, Nasdaq uh, undercut its 150 day and closed below it perhaps that market's going to go down and flush out a little further towards $55.30 cents which is the April lows for this stock um, so they haven't been tested whereas obviously in the spy we did undercut that level uh, here today um, in uh, from from that uh, April lows the Russell 2000 has been uh, a, a weak index obviously here with the rest of them and uh, and this you know here's another market that's that's adhered pretty well to the 50 then the 100 day moving average we've got a little bit of bouncing around near that hundred but we're now down below the 150 day moving average we've come down and basically closed this gap as well so it seems to me that you know, does it make sense to sell short after a drop from 85 to 79 and a half? Uh, that's that's probably not the smartest place to sell short. Um, certainly, if you're going to do it on a one-minute time frame, there's opportunities to look for on the short side there. But you have to be uh, really watching your risk management and, and being ready to, to to move to the sidelines quickly. Um, so we've expended a, a good bit of energy coming down here over the last uh, week or so. It doesn't mean we can't continue to move further but I don't think that the uh, the the best risk reward is to look for uh, further shorts in here unless it's just for a day trade candidate so you know the Russell 2000 uh, you know if this thing was to bounce this if we were to get an aggressive bounce this week uh, we could see it north of 80 bucks a share so maybe the uh, Friday uh, 80 calls are, are a good deal I don't know I haven't looked at them uh, perhaps I will semiconductors uh, they continue to break down as well uh, they they had obviously failed that prior resistance which was which had been supported 35 in the 50-day moving average the 100-day moving average failed now here we are down at the 150 day moving average not a place to buy but a good place to look for it now that we've kind of uh, come down so far so fast so I think that's the theme that it, we're in an area where it seems as though this market should bounce but there's zero evidence uh, of a bounce material materializing so if you're going to get involved make sure that uh, you do uh, uh, trade you know really make sure you have a way to, to limit your losses and for me I think uh, until the stocks develop in, in the markets develop a little bit further evidence or any evidence at all of, of a bottoming process to me I think that uh, options are the best way to get involved um, but even there it's it's really kind of a gamble right now